Let's talk about sex. This is Sexy Marriage Radio with Dr. Corey Allen and Gina Paris, where we are trying to have honest, upfront, practical, real conversations about everything sex. It's always a great topic to talk about. And not much going on out there talking about it in healthy ways. And so we're trying to get an idea of how to have a marriage with passion, pleasure, and purpose. You can find us at sexymarriageradio.com. And we'd love to hear from you. We've already got some emails that have been flooding in. You can also call our feedback line at 615-567-3996. An email at feedback at sexymarriageradio.com. And by way of special announcement, we are also now on iTunes, BlackBerry, and Zoom. So you can subscribe for free on any of one of those popular feed services and get notification of a new show without doing anything. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so, Gina, what's going on? I, I'm cracking up at us saying we're trying. It makes me think of Yoda and Luke Skywalker and- What's his famous line? <laughs> do or do not. There is no try. That's right. Try. Right? <laughs> there is not. So, you know, here we are. We're doing it. We're talking about sex. And the feedback that we're getting from people say that we're we're on target. So, in fact, I'd love to read this letter since it's... I, we make sure Corey reads these letters before me because if, if they came in really mean, it might break <laughs> Might break my heart. Gina's Gina's the tender one uh, between us. It, it, it's yeah okay. That, that, that that's probably enough explanation. <laughs> but you're you're like Simon Cowell and and I'm Paula. <laughs> I, I'm not even gonna go answer that one. Oh man! <laughs> so I love this letter. This is from Brazil. And she says, hi, Gina and Corey. I've just listened to episode four on Sexy Marriage Radio. And wow, it just hit me. It was so enlightening and insightful. And I've just forwarded it to my husband, she says, with a smiley face. I listened to almost all the Sexy Summit series. Woohoo! And it was a breakthrough. I'm from Brazil. And down here among Christians, sex is usually taboo or there's pornography. <laughs> I never heard anyone talking about sex so clearly and with respect and objectiveness. I thank God for your lives and initiative for spreading your knowledge. Funny how that Brazil seems to resemble the USA there with the uh, (laughs) lack of uh, conversation with respect and objectiveness. So it's encouraging. It is because that's exactly what we're trying to do. That's right. As we try. is, Is to have a healthy approach to an important aspect of our life and our marriage and to have a different way to view things that hopefully then turns up the heat in everybody's marriage. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we laugh a lot on this show. And, and a lot of times, of course, the the letters come in and the calls come in that reveal a lot of pain. And so we don't ever want you to think that we're flippant about this subject because, man, your, your letters and, and we know what kind of things people are going through out there. And we've experienced them in our marriages. Once again, Corey and I are not married to each (laughs) other. Slight disclaimer. (laughs) That's right. But uh, yeah, we, we want to help. So what do you think, Corey? Well, and that's, that's a great lead into some of the emails we've gotten because the, the emails that have come so far to feedback at sexymarriageradio.com all are along the same lines as some of the things we've already talked about of right. the idea of there's huge differences in desire and also where some of the stereotypical thoughts of high desire being the male, low desire being the female are reversed, where it's the sure. woman that has the desire that's higher than her husband or the woman that has pain in, during intercourse or has uh, trouble being aroused and being involved and letting go and loosening up. And all of these issues, you know, they're real. They're, they're, they're painful. They run deep because some of them, like the, one of the emails we got was from a, a, a listener that talks about how she feels pain during sex and never feels good or aroused, which obviously neither of us are medical doctors. Right. I mean, my PhD is just, it doesn't do anything medically. So 
it's it's something that there's various avenues that need to be explored when it comes to pain during sex because there could be something vaginal there could be something that if there's children involved that childbirth has maybe left some scarring or some issues that could be resolved medically um then there's also it could be just because of lack of arousal which means lack of lubrication which is just going to also increase the discomfort that can be associated with sex and so some of that stuff needs to be explored with with your medical practitioner And, and so that's that's one that's kind of a I guess handing off the issue to somebody else but it's also something that without enough more more information we can't really do much about on this show right if she comes back to us after a visit to the gynecologist or or whatever with a little more information kind of it does break up into like you were saying two areas physical or mental and uh one pretty famous mental physical problem is just the vaginicism. If there's involuntary clenching of all these muscles, it comes from no arousal or, you know, I was quite familiar with that myself actually because of my decision, I guess, this is why, what I think. Since I had made a decision to stay a virgin until I got married, I had trained myself to kind of shut down <laughs> a certain point of arousal uh, while I was dating. And so that was something that mentally I had to overcome. So my gynecologist had some ideas on that. And um, using what I knew about a mind-body connection, I was able to, to do that. So hopefully she'll come back and we can deal with the pain issue. Absolutely, because there's also more to that email of that that is associated with it on the idea of she says she feels anxious and uncomfortable with having mm-hmm. sex, but is with a very sexual husband, and so right. there's auto- automatically then a whole lot of more increased pressure to want to be a part of that, but also yeah. knowing it's not enjoyable for me, and so right. man, that's you talk about a huge dilemma to be caught in of of how do you how do you navigate that and Gina if you would mm-hmm. you, you touched on it what you know of the mind body connection that's helped you do you care right. to elaborate oh well I'll I'll go into that example then of what I was supposed to do if you see a sex therapist about um, involuntary vaginicism like I'm saying are you just clenching up not aroused then this medical procedure is literally you inserting little dilators in your body something small and then like tapers like they were suggesting even wax candles of varying widths you know so they start narrow tapers and the idea is you get yourself used to just relaxing with something bigger and bigger inside of you and so I was able to just lay down and I just thought about it. You know, I remember when I bought these candles that were about 12 inches long. Well, obviously, we're going to all 12 inches, but, you know, candles like you might light for dinner. And just thinking about it, instead of it stressing me out, I just laid there and I relaxed a lot. And I imagined if I was able to do that and, and relax. And um, once I was able to just picture it, um, then, then I was able to, you know, my body just responded. Actually, I just realized what it, what, what the problem was. My very first visit to the gynecologist was so traumatic to me, and it was a guy, and so actually, it was the, <laughs> the pelvic exam was so painful because I clenched up so much. So everything kind of made me think, wow, I would, I'm, it's violating yeah. having stuff in and, there. And I've heard that before. I've, I've heard that so, from other people too that have had. Uh, traumatic visits, I guess. And it's not like there was anything inappropriate. It's just their body and their mind was not ready as a teenager for what all happened at at the the gynecologist. And so it really impacted them. And so then immediately something that is beautiful and blessed and pleasurable is immediately turned to something that's feared and uncomfortable yeah. And and uncertain and scary. Yeah, and, and gross. On a paper towel in a doctor's office, it's cold and it was gross. And and, it, and then I had to walk out of there back to work. I was I worked outside cutting lawns, you know, and my partner <laughs> had been waiting for me. He was a sixty year old alcoholic and I thought, Oh, I feel like everyone knows how violated I've just been. And that's and so, that's a hard transition to make sometimes and it takes a lot of time and so what you talked about was 
obviously there's some physical things that can be done that can help loosening the muscles can help but a lot of it is really more mental it's it's learning how to relax it's learning how to be engaged and be involved during the whole process yes which to me means for the other people we've had several other emails that have come in that that have touched on something along the same lines of how do i loosen up how do i get more engaged in sex and to me the first step is you speak up when sex starts to unfold you don't have to follow a script because there's every couple has a script of of how sex happens and usually there's only two or three scripts of of how of how sex happens because we we basically just kind of follow a routine you know and it's it's you usually falls in onto the shoulders of whoever takes the lead whoever's responsible for sex will usually do what worked last time to accomplish whatever it is they're seeking and learning how to let go of that and still stay engaged is a huge growth opportunity and it's a huge maturing opportunity and so one of the things to do is just start to speak up and start to just say hey you know if you if you've got a spouse that is engaged in in the marriage and is in love with you and is willing to work with you through some of these issues because they're going to get some benefit of you being more involved and more engaged in in sex i mean i'm i, I can't imagine a spouse who wouldn't want that then ex- explain to them sometime when it's not a when you're not talking about the issue explain to them the whole idea of hey i really want to try and be more involved and be more engaged and be and be more a part of this process but th- that means i need to say some things different and we need to try some things different and so whenever the move starts and the thing starts to unfold and foreplay is going on if you're not into it speak up and just say hey i'm not there can we talk can we do something else can we and and just kind of see what unfolds because oftentimes speaking up is filled with so much fear of hurting their feelings and rejection that you just kind of go with it you just "Eh, all right i'll just let it all unfold and it's not it's going to be none about me i'm not going to enjoy this because you're so tied up in knots that that you just let it go well i'm wondering the difference between confidence levels, you know, for a woman, when we're not feeling confident at all about ourselves or in touch with our own senses, it's really hard to say, this is what I want sexually. Cause we have like no desire at all sexually. Right. I want a sandwich. Right. So, um, it, part of loosening up really is, is learning to celebrate your sexuality, uh, more more consciously and more deliberately and that means that when you get up in the morning be in touch with your senses make an environment that's beautiful really enjoy those 200 or 600 thread count sheets on your bed and and when you shower really enjoy the fragrance of your your shower look you know what i mean everything yeah. that smells good and feels good and enjoy the way your body looks right now and all of those things will help you at least have energy flowing that can be channeled sexually okay and that's a good start and i think i think we need to be careful that it's it's not about to me it's not about having a woman that can take charge of her own sexuality and know exactly what she wants yeah, because that's not, that's not necessarily true for a lot of women, right? You know, I don't know. I, I, I literally I don't know what I want until Paul tries stuff. I'm like, oh my god, exactly. I can't do that to myself. Exactly. All these articles all over the internet about self pleasure teaches you all this stuff. It doesn't work for me. Yeah. Literally, it's like trying to tickle yourself. Like, yeah. oh, that tickles. Uh, it's I don't know. Maybe I'm the only. No, uh, you're, I don't think you're, I don't think you're without. the only one. But it is it is something that it's it's more about learning how to be more comfortable in your own skin as exactly. a as a human. Exactly. And 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 knowing that there are some things that my that I can only go when I'm with my spouse. I mean, my exactly. spouse can take me places I cannot go myself. Exactly. But there's also a lot of places I can go on my own. You know, sexually, sexually, and otherwise. Sure. So it's it's more about just 
being more comfortable as, as who you are and being able to say, hey, this isn't working. I don't have an answer, but I'm, I'm going to be brutally honest and say, this ain't working. And right. then see if you can create a, a collaborative alliance with your spouse to where then you work together to come up with answers. You work together to come up with what will work. And you, and you actually, as Dr. Schnarch talks about it, you see each other behind the eyeballs. You let each other into what's really going on in your own life, and you, and then you see what unfolds, because that's really where sex is housed. You know, right. that, that's really where the major experiences are housed is is in the brain. And and if you can be as as a woman, if you can be more relaxed and more comfortable as who you are, you increase dramatically the likelihood that you will be aroused and engaged. Absolutely. And past performance does not predict future pleasure. Right. At any, any moment, you can cut yourself off from, from your whole story Absolutely. about it being painful. Or, you know, think of other things in your life that you didn't like at one time or any t- anything that we experience. There's good times and bad times and things that we used to not like, even foods that we eat. Right. There's certain foods we enjoy as adults that we hated as children. So you can certainly change your story around that. Sure. And, and the more, and it's kind of the whole idea of following the connection of, of staying in the moment. Right. And whenever you lose the moment, cause that's the interesting thing. When I work with couples and we get into the whole topic of sex and I ask them to kind of tell, take me through their, their normal sexual experience that when they'll, they'll describe it, and they'll, they'll kind of walk me through what, ha- what happens. And at some point, I can kind of watch as they're telling the story. You can tell when one of them disconnects. Right. And to me, if you're honest, you know when your partner is involved or not. Beyond physically. I mean, you know it. You can sense it. You can sense if they're thinking about something else or if they're just letting it all unfold and you just go ahead or whatever. But if you're honest and you slow down enough, you'll know they're into it or they're not. And right. the question is, what do you do with that disconnection? If you're the one, I mean, in my marriage, one of the pivotal moments for us sexually has been years ago when we were in the midst of sex, my wife disconnected. And I've always been the, the initiator and the take the lead. And that, I'm fine with that most, most of the time. Um, but that, that's kind of the role we play. And at one point, we were, we were just going through the motions, and I got the sense that she was not there. She wasn't into it. And I want to have a wife that's into it. I don't want a wife that's just, yeah, go ahead, get it over with, and let's move on about our day. Right. And I, w- I was settling for the, the latter, a majority of the first part of our marriage. And at some, for some reason... During this time, I stopped and just at, looked her straight in the eye and just said, where are you? And she's like, I'm sorry, I'm not there. And I'm like, okay. And so I got up, got dressed, and just we sat down and I just said, hey, I want to be with you. Whatever that means and whatever that means has to happen, I'm not going to settle for less. Right. Which then means I had to take this huge step of, well, I may, I may have just made a move where there's going to be no sex ever again in my marriage. <laughs> but it's one of those things that it was an honest moment for both of us to kind of put things on our own shoulders and take responsibility for ourselves to be more involved in our own life. And, and so she was able just from that one time to always be engaged? No, not at all. Oh, okay, thanks. But, but it is one of those we, that... It, well, it, you know, we do generally multitask. It. I wonder if but I, the difference between the way men are so singularly focused versus women, I have no idea if that means it is harder for us to focus. I mean, I remember laying on my back looking, at, thinking, oh, my gosh, I could make these new curtains, and that would look so good right there. <laughs> and Paul goes, what are you thinking? I, Did you tell him? No. Okay. <laughs> I tried to pull back in. Okay. And, and, and I think that, you know, men do the same thing where you come in and you, you, we kind of come in and out of it. And that's the whole goal is, is learning right. how to be more present, not just during sex, just in our own life. 
Exactly. To, to actually enjoy the moment as they unfold without any preconceived expectation of outcome and just be present and then see what happens. And, and that's, a, that's a continual work in progress because sexually speaking, when, when the, the fires get started, usually they build on themselves. Right. And it can be derailed. You know, a, a wrong touch, a wrong comment, sure. a, a, a wrong scent, a wrong whatever can derail it. But if you're both, to me, if you, if you bring that up into the open rather than trying to power through it on your own and actually invite your partner into that whole process of you trying to be involved, more yeah. involved, you increase the likelihood of that working as opposed to you being on your own island and then having this whole, oh, I got to get back into this. This isn't right. A wife should be doing this or a husband should always feel this. Or, and then you're kind of going down this whole path and your, whole part, your partner's there with you having sex with you, but not anywhere near you. Yeah. And, you know, it, it all plays, sometimes it plays into our story, too, around sex. Sure. You know, if it's been a bad experience, and of course, it's natural to disconnect. So that, again, comes back to rewriting your story. Let this be your secret garden, a place of paradise, just like in the beginning when God put Adam and Eve in the garden, and literally he named it pleasure and delight. That's what we want your most intimate space to be for you and your mate. And and if if we could just say to lighten up and slow down, it'd go a long way. Well, slowing down is one of the major ones. That's, that's Absolutely. one of the major places to start is just slow down. I think I told every single client I've ever worked with, slow down. Ab- because Absolutely. Because we go so fast and, and, you know, in some instances, sex can be over so fast anyway <laughs> that it's just slow down. And, I know. I've had stay these with three it. girls ask me, how, how can we just, just reach orgasm faster? I said, why do you want to do it fast? Because <laughs> we're busy. <laughs> well, then maybe that's, and that's part of the problem. It is a problem. It's, it's drive through sex. Exactly. Which is why chocolate is 50% more arousing. <laughs> it's, it's so fast. It's unwrap it, <laughs> put it on the tongue. Okay. No, but it's not as rewarding. So hopefully that just speaks to the idea of connecting together. Yeah, and that's also one of the biggest risks when it comes to marriage is connecting on deeper levels because that means I have to let my spouse into my own little quirks and nuances and things that I maybe don't even like about myself, but I have to be willing to let them in and let them care for me and let them be a part of my life and let them support me at times. And, and, and that's where the elegance of marriage and, you know, I I think of it this way, that the idea of marriage is I'm going to give my spouse everything possible to hurt me. And what do they do with that? Because, because they know my weaknesses, they know the buttons that they can, you know, my, my wife knows the buttons she can push that could crush me mm-hmm. on, on, an, on an esteem level. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm almost confident she could come home and say something that would just devastate me. Right. But because of our life together, she knows those things. And what does she do with it? That's the risk. That's, and, and that's also the beauty of marriage. It is. It's very special. You know, maybe when we talk again, maybe we can tackle the idea of when there's just so much pain emotionally around the issue with spouses of of different desire. I I think we've had an email or or somebody talking about, you know, the spouse wants sex but never initiates. And so there's so much emotion around there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's, you know, this is that idea we've talked about, I think, on almost every show, is that the meanings that we place on sex yep. determine so much of what happens. And sometimes it's just learning how to reframe the meaning yeah. um, or, or make the meaning deeper or make the meaning more obvious of, of what it is that you want and what it is that's going on. Because when it comes to, no, no, let me just speak as a, as a man. When it comes to sex and the desire and arousal 
with that, that happens within marriage. There is nothing that turns a man on more than a sexually turned on woman. Right. And so the more involved each of you can be when it comes to sex, man, it, it becomes limitless of what can happen. And it's so it's, it's learning how to just follow the connection together. It's learning how to let sex just unfold and, and not have a script because sometimes, you know, one of the questions I ask couples is how do you know when sex is over? And typically it's, well, when he orgasms or ejaculates, then it's done. You know, that's, that's kind of, cause it's the, it seems the common pattern for a lot of couples is she goes first, I go second, you know, so she's brought to climax and then intercourse happens. He's brought to climax and you move on about your day. All right, now he's asleep in five seconds. Maybe. Or mowing the lawn. Maybe. But what what if, though, during the whole time when it's his turn, when it, whether it's penile vaginal intercourse or something else, she wants more? Would you be as you know, would you be gutsy enough to say, No, no, buddy, you're not done. Stay here. Which then means the man has to stay go through some of the issues of, man, I don't know if I can go another time or maybe I can do something else or I th- I'm done. You know, I, I don't want any more intimacy. I don't want to be close anymore. This is feeling gross. Or, you know, there's all these different things that kind of start to unfold. But we let that determine what happens far more than our own mind and desire determine what happens. Yeah. And so this is a rewriting of everything, that there's no script to this. It's more follow your gut. It's more be true to who you are in the moment and see what happens. Yeah, and it's why sex gets better. Absolutely. Not worse. <laughs> Absolutely. Because it is something that when you can be your authentic self and more comfortable as who you are, you're willing to speak up more for what you want, but also what you don't want. But also, hey, this is me. You know, yeah. love it, take it. Yeah. Because this is me. I'm not going to put on a, a, a facade or a performance or anything like that. I, 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 this is just who I am. Right. You can you can take it or leave it. And yes, yeah, powerful. Sorry again. It's powerful. Ab- absolutely, it is. And the the com- the comedic way to say it is that research shows that good sex and cellulite have positive correlation. Thank you. I that is the. Th- you know, we've talked about that before. <laughs> because because as you get older, my saying is that cellulite is the new sexy. <laughs> yeah, because because as you get older, that's typically when people are more comfortable in their own skin. Right. And and specifically, women become more comfortable in their own skin as they get older. And right. when I don't know, as a, as a man, it is interesting that a a full grown knows what she wants and who she is. Woman can be intimidating. Because there's a lot of energy there. <laughs> it's not a show and it's not a performance. It's not the objective kind of yeah. pornography stuff that we that's portrayed. It's more deep and more powerful of an energy. I mean, I think of the ocean when it comes to the feminine. That it, that, that's a ton of power there. That, man, it's fun to wade into, but it's also scary <laughs> to, to wade into sometimes. And that, that's just this whole concept of us growing up and becoming more who we are is the way to go. It's not about a script or technique. It's more about you being you and seeing what happens. With, with everything you are right now, it's, you have everything you need for a beautiful love life. Absolutely. That's a great way to say it. We, we want to hear from you. We want to know what's, what's on your mind. We want to know what you think, what's going on, how we can help. You can jump on our feedback line at 615-567-3996. You can also email us at feedback at sexymarriageradio.com. And we will try to dive further into some of your questions in the future shows. Until then, great sex, great life. They go hand in hand. Yeah, they do. So slow down and lighten up and have more sex. (laughs) We'll talk to you again soon. See you next show. Bye-bye.
talk about.